keeps telling me he'll be back in five minutes. He'll, you know, don't. She's asked to call him and um, tell him she loved him on the phone. I don't know what to say to her. There are other worries. Dan had no insurance and Kelly has no job. But at the moment, yeah, that all seems sure so trivial after all that she's seen. And I caught the plane going into the building. And that's all the first night I could think about was I could picture him on it. I don't know how he, if he knew anything or what, but. Um, An image, she says, that will stay with her forever and ever. Anne McDermott, CNN, Los Angeles. Welcome back to our coverage this morning on the aftermath of the multiple terrorist attacks on the United States. You're looking at a picture of what is now being called Ground Zero. Uh, the mayor of New York still calling it a rescue operation until all hope fades. Workers have been there on 12-hour shifts in some cases, 12 hours off. Other workers working 24 hours straight, 24 hours off meticulously digging through the rubble, in some cases gathering the debris in their hands, transporting it in uh, small pails to uh, larger transportation vehicles. The number of missing continues to grow here in New York City. The city confirming that number is now over 5,000. The FBI this morning calling this the, the single largest crime scene ever. In fact, the crime area grew every night overnight when a passport belonging to one of the hijackers was discovered several blocks away from the crash site. That is the latest from New York right now. I want to introduce you to some of my colleagues who will be with me the next several hours. Bill Hemmer joins us from an area not far from Ground Zero. John, you are hot. We can see you. John King continues to stand by at the Capitol from our studios there. Studios there, and Miles O'Brien is with us uh, from Atlanta. Miles, I'm going to turn it over with you for a uh, broader look at uh, the investigations going on. Good morning, Paula. The latest developments this Sunday morning uh, are to follow. Senior Pakistani officials are expected to travel to Afghanistan tomorrow. They will be delivering an ultimatum to the rulers of Afghanistan, the Taliban to surrender Osama bin Laden, who is believed to be there, or face massive military attacks by the United States. One of the 25 people detained last week by the U.S. Immigration and Naturalization Service has now been arrested and is in FBI custody in connection with Tuesday's terrorist attacks. That makes two people who have been arrested as so-called material witnesses, and they remain in custody this morning. And New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani today is encouraging New Yorkers to maintain hope that more survivors will yet be found. President Bush continues meeting with his senior advisors at Camp David about possible military options. Mr. Bush spoke by phone last night to Pakistan's president to thank him for his support. A senior administration official says Pakistan's expected ultimatum to the Taliban about surrendering Osama bin Laden is very encouraging news. Pakistan allied closely with the Taliban and ultimately Osama bin Laden. The domestic security component of current military planning is now being called Operation Noble Eagle. Mayor Giuliani in New York says the search for survivors in the rubble of the World Trade Center will continue until there's no more hope. As Paula told you just a few moments ago, so far some 22,000 tons of debris have been painstakingly removed. Of the 159 deaths confirmed so far in the World Trade Center attacks, 99 have been identified. Nearly 5,000 reported missing this morning. No one has been found alive in the wreckage since Wednesday, but hope still prevails. Sources are telling CNN that two of the hijackers aboard the jet that slammed into the Pentagon have been under surveillance in connection with the terrorist attack on the USS Cole. October of last year. The Washington Post is reporting the FAA alerted the National Military Air Defense Command about the approaching uh, jet in this latest attack, uh, but that warning was not passed along to the Pentagon. American Airlines Flight 77 hit the building about 12 minutes later. 188 people are believed to have died in that uh, attack. That brings you up to date. Let's send it back to Paula, New York. 
Thanks so much, Miles. Joining me right now is the senior senator from New York, Charles Schumer. Good to have you with us today. Yeah, uh, before to be we get to what you have experienced over the last day, uh, a quick reaction to the president's declaration of war yesterday. I think it's the right thing to do, uh, Paula. We're we will win this fight against terrorism, different as it is from any war we passed, if we're resolute. And if we stick together, if we forget this in th two, three months, they'll win. And when they come back next time, it'll be even a lot worse than this, as terrible as this is. So declaring that this is a war is the right thing to do. We cannot delay any further. We've seen all the signs with this incident, that incident, and now this horrible tragedy. <clears throat> It's going to get a lot worse unless we snuff it out. Mm -hmm. Biological, chemical, nuclear. I think you would even acknowledge that the administration is working very hard to pull together a coalition they right are. now, but uh, some of your colleagues say there are tremendous constraints in place. Do you think at the end of this process it will be legal for the United States to target and assassinate an individual? And if it turns out that indeed the prime sus suspect Osama bin Laden is responsible for it, that you can go after him? Well, it's a very tough question, but yes, without any doubt. I think there have to be procedures in place so you can't just target willy-nilly. But when you know somebody creates a clear and present danger to tens of thousands of people, I believe that law will change. Is there going to be it's a red, uh, it's heated debate over it, or do you think there is in general support in the Senate and the House to, to change this? It's actually a, a regulation that was passed, I believe, in the Carter administration, and the president could undo it on his own. Now, I doubt that Congress would ever overrule him if he should decide to do it, as long as there are some guidelines in place that make this done with care. But I think in this new world where a small group or even one individual, because of technology, can do huge amounts of damage, the rules change. We saw pictures of you touring the debris site with the president. Both you and Hillary Clinton have uh, lauded the president for the aggressive actions he's taken on uh, this city's behalf. Yeah. What else needs to be done? You were down well, there uh, to two days after that as well. We're going to have plenty uh, to do. I mean, this first $20 billion, when I sat in the Oval Office and I asked the president, I said, we need, we, I talked to the mayor and governor, we need $20 billion. I thought he'd say, well, let me study it, or why don't we start with five? It's a huge sum of money. He said, you need it, I'm for it. And late that night, when some of the very conservative members of the Senate, of his party, said no, he stood them down. And what he has done is helped give New York a real spirit and united America. And I think that's really important. After all, if you wanted to look at it in sort of just strictly political terms, we're the blue states. Right. We weren't for him, and he easily could have said, we'll give you the minimum we need. He has done the maximum. I give him an A, and I think New Yorkers are just gratified, not only with the president's reaction, but all of America. I was told this morning that the Virginia newspaper said, we love New York, big one-page spreads. That's probably pretty astonishing, <laughs> given the um, arrogant reputation New Yorkers have and uh, well, the, are, the attitude that's often tagged to us. You know, we're undergoing, so it's, it's, it's the most difficult time we face. Uh, in my neighborhood in Brooklyn, which you can almost see from here, I found out yesterday that four children at our local public school are, have, have a parent missing. Mm. I went to our local firehouse, 11 firefighters missing. And this is affecting every community in New York. We need the nation's help. We need them to be there for us. And the nation has been. And God bless America for that. It really has been heartening. One little anecdote. When I was with the president in the motorcade, we went up the west side of Manhattan. Chelsea, Greenwich Village, the most democratic areas. He lost them 9 to 1, 10 to 1. People came out of their apartments. They were four or five deep cheering him on as the motorcade went by. It was quite a sight. Boy, that is, that is yeah. interesting. Um, there is tremendous concern on what is going to happen here when the markets open tomorrow. Yeah. We have heard uh, warnings that everybody should be patient, uh, that there, there's going to be tremendous volatility. You will be at the New York Stock Exchange at opening bell time. 
give us a preview of what you think will happen. Well, a lot of care has gone into this. Care in terms of the mechanics, the phone system, and the computer systems, and the electricity systems, which of course were wiped out down there. In fact, I, I should add, run. when you were traveling here, Con Edison confirmed it's now laying down some 20 miles yeah. of cable to try to restore electricity. And you know, the firefighters and police officers have been great. So have the utility workers and the construction workers. They've all been terrific. The other question is, what will happen to the markets? And I think the Treasury Secretary, the Federal Reserve Chairman Alan Greenspan, the large banks and the large companies are preparing for that. In other words, rules have changed so that companies, if they see their stock go down, can buy some of their stock. I am hopeful that this will, will be a good opening. I think it's been quick, but a lot of effort and care has gone in, and uh, I think to make a mistake would be worse than doing it quickly, and that's why some of the calls to open this Wednesday or Thursday or Friday didn't make sense. We're ready. I think it's going to work. I only have time for one more question because everybody wants a, a, a chunk of your time today. The president has implored Americans to be prepared for a long and sustained campaign, but in addition to that, he's very much urging Americans to get back to work and try to resume a life that is as normal as possible. Is that reasonable to expect? I think it's the right blend. You can't say business as usual will never be the same again in, in America, New York. But to just sit there and twiddle our thumbs is not the right way to do it. It's not really the American go-getter way. So I think we should try to get back to our jobs and our businesses. And then when we're called on for sacrifices, which the military will be and civilians will be, we, we go forward and, 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 and meet those sacrifices and do what has to be done. So I think you can do both. Senator Schumer, good to see you. Thank, thank you, you very much for dropping thank you by for the here. Great uh, job you've been doing. Thank you very much. Uh, just uh, moments ago, uh, Mayor Giuliani spoke with the uh, mayor of Jerusalem, um, Mr. Omer, and, and we wanted to share a small part of that conversation with you right now. All of the people of New York City appreciate uh, greatly the support that we have in our, uh, in our sister city of, Jer of Jerusalem. Jerusalem is a city that's even older by a lot than New York. It's a city that we feel tremendous, a tremendous affection for and attachment to. It's the, uh, it's the site of the three great religions of the world, or the three great religions that have affected Western civilization. And we feel tremendous bond uh, with the people of Jerusalem. And I particularly feel a very close personal bond with, uh, with Ehud, with Mayor Olmert. Having been to Jerusalem during a period of time where you went through and are still going through things like we're experiencing today. And I remember riding the bus with you, Ehud, when uh, the people of your city okay. were shocked and frightened and upset and overcame it. All right, we interrupt Mayor Giuliani right now as our Secretary of Defense gets a briefing underway. Let's listen in. who are attacking our way of life do not have armies, navies, or air forces. They do not have capitals. They do not have high-value targets that the typical weapons of war can go in and, and attack. They have to, the, which is why the president has said what he has said. It, it will take a broad, sustained uh, uh, effort that will that will be have to use our our dip, diplomatic, our political, our economic, our financial strength as well as our military strength, and unquestionably uh, unconventional techniques. And uh, it will take time. It's not a matter of days or weeks. It's, it's years. It is, it, it's going to take the support of the American people, and I have every confidence it'll be there. It'll take the support of countries around the world. There are a number of countries that are harboring terrorists. They, they in some cases, facilitate them, some cases finance, in other cases just tolerate. But, but these people could not be functioning around the globe with the success they are unless they had that uh, help from, from countries, and those countries, some of them do in fact have armies and navies and air forces, and they do have capitals, and they do have high value targets. And we're, we're going to need them to stop tolerating terrorists. Are we going to take down the Taliban government? Uh, the, the last thing you're going to find me doing is discussing intelligence matters or operations. Sir, 
Mr. Abdullah Abdullah, the northern of Afghanistan's northern alliance, has offered his organization support in any operation against the Taliban or uh, Osama bin Laden. Uh, what role should these Taliban resistance groups play, and what role will the U.S. ask them to play? The United States needs assistance from countries with intelligence information. We need assistance from countries to deny terrorists and terrorist networks the access to their real estate and their facilities. We need them to uh, cooperate in a host of ways if this goal is going to be achieved. My guess is there will be 